Believe me, your friends are all gonna be jealous when you pull out a handmade wallet out of your pocket to pay for their drinks at the old gas station. How's it going everybody? Welcome back to The Leather Shop. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make a leather wallet out of some household items that you got laying around. So if you've ever wanted to make a wallet but you felt like you didn't have the right tools or the knowledge or the experience or the fancy this or that or these or those, that's okay because you just need a few things laying around the house and you can make a wallet. So let's get after it. The first thing you're gonna need is to go round up some tools. So let's go get a fork, a nail of some sort, maybe a roofing nail, a hammer, or something to beat a nail through some leather. You're gonna need some leather. I would recommend getting vegetable tan leather, a couple needles that you can get at Amazon, a little bit of thread, also Amazon. Now that you've found your items, we're gonna go ahead and make a pattern. Now what the easiest thing to do is take a card if you're wanting to make a card slip set it on a piece of paper and start drawing it out and just kind of come up with something. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, when I first started doing this, I literally just took two squares and stitched them together and card slid right in there. You can do something as simple as that. The cool thing is this is all your project. So you can customize it, you can make it neat, or if it's something simple, it's still got a lot of value because you made it with your own hands. And that's what's awesome about leather work. When you guys are drawing out your pattern, I like to give myself about a quarter inch all the way around the card and that I'll use for stitching and that'll give a little bit of slack for the card to slide into. So the cool thing about when you're making this pattern, if you just cut out one piece that you know is the right size, you can match that for the other side. So you can do that on the back. And then if you want an extra little pocket, which I think we're gonna do today, you can just cut this piece before you put it on the cardboard. So after you cut your other two pieces out, you make your third piece out of this. That way they all stay the same. So I've got my two pieces marked out on the cardboard. So now I'm gonna cut this into a design here for my front pocket. So Let's see, we'll go ahead and get our card, put it on there. We probably want to see about this much here. Fairly good. There we go. So I like that. So we'll go ahead and trace this one out. All right, now that you have your pattern marked out on your leather, it's time to cut the leather out. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab an X-Acto knife, a box knife, kitchen knife, pocket knife, just some type of knife. I like using an X-Acto knife. When I first got started, I used a box knife. Either one of these work really well because they're sharp. The key is you wanna make a nice clean cut and not pull the leather apart because that is gonna make a better finished product at the end. We got it cut out and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and bevel the edge. Now you can buy a specialty tool for that but we're just gonna use an X-Acto knife. So most of this we can do after we glue it but this piece that you see here that's gonna be on the front pocket, that's gonna be hard to do once we have it glued. So we wanna go ahead and finish this edge right here as best we can before we glue it together. All right guys, you got your leather cut out. Now it's time to glue it up. But you can get any contact cement from Walmart or Amazon or whatever. I've even used super glue in the past. So it doesn't really matter. You just want something to get those edges to stay together. That way when you're punching your holes, your leather's not gonna slip around and you're gonna have nice even straight punches. You got a smooth side and a rough side. So we obviously want to use this smooth side on the outside so it looks really nice and clean. We need to scratch the edge off just a little bit so that glue will adhere. So just take your knife or whatever you got and just scratch it up. So now your glue is cured, your leather is set together. If you have some big overhangs of different pieces sticking up, go ahead and take a sharp knife like your X-Acto and go ahead and carve those off. You can also, if it's not bad, just take some sandpaper and clean them up that way. If you're gonna use sandpaper, make sure it's not too rough that's gonna tear up your leather or, uh, or take too much off. So you've got your edges looking really nice and pristine. It's looking good. You can take another quick second and do a little bit more customization if you want. If you wanna cut some rounder corners and just kinda clean up the shape of it, you can do that. So. That's what I'm gonna do right now, because I like some round corners. Here's a little quick tip. Take your coffee cup, set it on the corner, and draw a line, and that's gonna help give you an idea of where to cut. Now, 
Now what you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take a little damp cloth and we're just gonna run around the edge of that leather and we're gonna slick the edge. Now what that means is we're gonna basically take the fibers, we're gonna dampen them, and then we're gonna lay them all over on each other and it's gonna create a nice slick surface. Now you can usually get a better looking edge with vegetable tan leather than you would with chrome tan. Unless you're buying a really high quality chrome tan, sometimes you can get a nice piece that will give you a good looking edge. All right guys, so here's a quick tip as well. Once you are burnishing your edge, you've dampened it, you're using either a piece of wood or like a bone, something that is helpful if you have a burnishing stick you can see it's got grooves in it now what that's going to do is that's going to help keep your edges rolled because if you're rubbing it really hard on a flat surface you're going to create mushrooming and your your edges are going to flare out and it's just going to kind of give you a not great look so if that does happen if you don't have any type of wood with a uh, groove in it um, go ahead and just do it with you know whether you got a bone or just a flat piece of wood just go ahead and use that and then go back over it with your X-Acto knife and just real lightly trim those up. And then what you can do is you can just take some cloth and you can kind of curve that cloth around it and work it in. All right guys, you've been wondering this whole time, what in the world is the fork for? So here we go, this is what it's for. We're first gonna use it to mark in a little line around the edge of our leather. Now after you got that done, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the fork again. Now make sure you got a fork that's nice and straight because if you got a wonky, wonky footed one, it ain't gonna work well. So take your fork and just press that into the leather following your line and what that's gonna do is that's gonna create little marks so you know where to punch your holes. Well, I bet you guys know what's coming next, right? Punching the holes. And that's where the nail and the hard object come in handy. So you're gonna take your nail and you're gonna just punch it through each one of those divots that the fork made and try to keep them nice and straight and in line because that's what's gonna make your finished product look that much better. I'll just tell you this right now that I think that hand stitching leather projects the best part of that is the stitching. So this is where you wanna take some time, learn the process of stitching and enjoy it. But also just try to make it look the best you can because that's what's gonna really stand out on your project. So when you're punching these nail holes, what you wanna make sure you do is keep this nail nice and straight. If you're coming in like this or coming in like this, you could have the potential of going in at such an angle that you come out and you don't have a straight stitch on the back. So you wanna make sure it looks clean front and back. All right, so you have your holes punched in the leather, now it's time to stitch. So what I'm gonna show you is what I think is one of the coolest looking stitches for leather projects and it just looks really clean and professional. Once I've started learning how to do this saddle stitch, my leather game changed tremendously. All right guys, so now it's time to stitch. We got everything set up, we got our holes punched and the wallet is looking awesome. I use a stitching pony. What that is, it's a clamp that holds the product and keeps it still while I'm stitching. But what you could do, is you can spin around, throw the project in between your knees and just stitch that way. That's what uh, I've done for many years and it works really well. But for the sake of the video, that way I can show you guys stitching a little bit easier. I'm gonna go ahead and use the stitching pony. What you're gonna need is two needles and about four times the length of thread to your project. If you got a four inch project, you're gonna need 16 inches of thread. All right guys, so I've got my needles threaded. I've got about uh, four to five times the length of thread as my project. I've got one needle on either side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by just threading this through the very first hole and then we wanna make sure we have even amounts of thread on either side. Now that we have that, we wanna pick a side that's gonna be our start side. So I'm gonna start from the right side here, which I'm gonna make this the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and push my needle through and then I'm gonna keep a loop on this side. Now. You're gonna take your left side needle or your back side needle and you're gonna push that through the same hole. Now that we've got our back side needle pushed through, we're gonna go ahead and send it through this loop that we kept on the front side. So we're gonna push that through and then now you can cinch it up. Now you wanna to check to make sure your thread is still even after making that first stitch and if it's not, just even it out and get the same amount on either side. All right, there we go. So now we're gonna continue this. We're gonna go ahead and push from our right hand side through. 
we're gonna keep the loop. We're gonna take our left hand side, go through the back side of that thread through the same hole, and then we're gonna go through the loop. Now that you go through that loop, you just go ahead and pull this through and pull it tight. And you wanna try to make even tension when you pull throughout the stitch, and that'll make your stitches look a little more even. Alright guys, in the final step, you could be done if you want to leave it that way and you like the look of your project, but if you want to take it to the next level, get yourself some beeswax, and I know not everybody has it laying around, but if you do or you want to buy some, just grab some beeswax and rub that into the edge of your project. Just get a nice coating on the edge and then take your burnishing stick, whether that is an antler, piece of wood, whatever you got laying around, take that and start working it in. Now, if you work this in and you take some time doing this and you build up some nice heat and friction, you're gonna get a nice chocolatey, caramel brown looking edge. And it's gonna be really slick, shiny, and smooth, and it's gonna look really nice. Now, now that you've done that, if you have some boot oil or leather oil or leather conditioner, go ahead and rub that into your project just to make it last a little bit longer and protect it from the elements and uh, you got a really sweet wallet so nice job building your first leather wallet all right guys thank you so much for following along i hope you guys learned something i had a blast showing you how you can make a leather wallet with just some household items that you got laying around um, remember this project that you make is not going to be perfect and that's okay but it's special because you made it and your hands built it so it makes the project that much cooler and believe me your friends are all going to be jealous when you pull out a handmade wallet out of your pocket to pay for their drinks at the old gas station now guys i hope you enjoyed remember to stitch straight and stay shatterproof we're for you here at shatterproof leather and we'll see you on the next one